they're like Lamborghinis of Death Chairs, and they literally cost like like that. It's like oh thousands of dollars. They're they're sick. People say that like they last a lifetime and never break your back. Like all the mm. fucking KD goes up, whatever whatever the thing is. Hey, but, hey, ergonomics will add <laughs> you know something like that. years to your life, I guess. And this chair I've had for years, and I love it. It's my mm. office chair, and I need to get a third chair for people, so this one doesn't have to come down two flights of stairs every time I have three people. <laughs> this on. is my chair. There uh, are many like it. There are. Unfortunately, there are. I wish it was only mine. I wish I had an exclusive fucking chair. Um, I just jacked me up. Start the Peter J T Media Media Chair brand. That's mm. not a yeah, dude. Got to diversify. This. <laughs> That's just the next thing. Skip right over t-shirts. Skip right over hats. It. Skip right over right hoodies, into chairs. Right man. to desk. Shark chair. Tank. You're you're good. You got it. And yeah, um, you're making money. Yeah. Episode forty two, dude. We're here. Who who else is selling chairs for um, merch? You know, dude. We are nobody. Dude. Episode forty two. Something from everyone. We are here with Colton Little. And Ryan Watley. Hello. Lately. How do you say your last name? Watley. Watley. Yes. Hell yeah, boys. Uh, I know we got a bunch of different bands going on. Colton, I'll start with you. What uh, bands are you officially playing? And what are your roles in the bands? What do you, what's going on with you? So I'm doing drums and slugs and guitar in quarantine right now. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Ryan, take uh, for you. I am doing drums and low, vocals in quarantined, and vocals in another project that I'm waiting to announce. <laughs> Big things coming soon. <laughs> Classic, dude. Every good local band's got them. But yeah, Colton um, is also uh, pitching in on bass for us these next two shows, yeah. uh, October mm-hmm. 15th and October 22nd so beat me too yeah uh, any shows coming up we all want to talk about anything people should know before we get into the before we get into stuff so recording this on i shouldn't know, oh it's friday the 13th I yeah know it, it is yeah. friday the 13th uh, happy today, day this is my my second episode of my podcast double header today let's go uh, i gave cole in the rundown earlier but yeah i did an episode three hours ago so if you just saw the episode of zach from euclid enjoy this nice. is yeah three hours past that and we're here had a little adventure uh we're here to go which people know about before they dive into the episode what's coming up that people should be or, sorry so we're filming this on the 13th. It'll be out like the 18th-ish, 19th-ish, somewhere in there. After that, what's coming up people should be aware of? 22nd, October 22nd. October 22nd. Uh, show in Gardner. Yeah, Gardner at... Mass, Slugs, Low. Oh, I don't think I posted it yet. You need to pull it up. <laughs> so we got a show coming up with some other bands, uh, Slugs and Low. Both will be playing it. We are currently in the process of finding out what venue it might be at. It would, if there's yeah. any other bands playing it or there's anything else we need to know. About being at the show while I fill time here, Colton. Missing right. October twenty second, Gardner, Mass, Slugs, Low, Delta Protocol, Hollow Teeth, and Vomit Dolls. Yes, yeah, son. Hell yeah. Yes. Um, hell yeah. I thought, we, thought we were going to say Vomit Fourth, and I almost got real hyped. Like, Dude, I love those guys. They're the homies. Um, hell yeah, Kings. Thanks for coming through. Uh, my quick little two cents of plugs here. Uh, is that I just send out the final mats for a CG music video? That I'm really stoked about, mm. uh, and I was. Excited that you guys are both coming here because I've both done uh, CG work for both your bands. I'm stoked about. So we got La yes. Pell for Low, uh, and then we have the lyric video for Virus. I think Karma, the Karma lyric video for Slugs. I really like that one. I've always yeah, cool. it's always like stuck on my brain or something that I'm like, uh-huh. yeah. Give Peter your money uh, oh, for all of your band needs. Ryan's the man. He's so good. Uh, <laughs> I I wanted to start with. So we got a show coming up in two days. So as we're recording this, it's a Friday. Uh, on Sunday, two days from now, we got a uh, Slugs headliner. Low is also playing it. All the homies going to be there. Uh, I guess my first question for you guys is, like, what would make that show a success? So as we look ahead to a, a show, there's so many things that, like, can happen and can go well. And I think to some degree it's playing the songs well. It's our gear not blowing up. But, like, it, assuming that people show up, assuming that our cabs don't blow up and that our drum sets don't blow up, like, yeah. what makes that a good show for you guys? Uh, you know, man, it's just really the vibe of the show. The you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just the vibe. Uh, no, I think what makes the show is how interactive the crowd okay. uh, gets. Because it's like, even if they don't know your stuff or, like, really like it that much, yeah. if, you know, somebody's kind of bobbing their head and everybody looks like they're having a halfway decent time, that's mission accomplished for me. Merch sales are always great. Yeah. Donations are always great. But just as long as people are like paying attention, yeah. I guess, rather than just kind of, you know, fucking off, doing whatever. Yeah, Slugs has been doing a new thing where at the end of our set, we have like people come on the stage. That's and, cool. like Half the shows we play, there isn't a stage. It's just like in the corner. Yeah. So there's no actual stage diving. You know what I mean? Like we just get everyone to come up there and mosh us it, on the guitar- stage. Taurus and pedal boards must yeah. hate that. They yeah, must be so fucking it's pissed risky, off but really says, come on stage. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's fun, you know. And most of the time, people do it, so that's cool. That's that's one of our like specific things that that's sick. That would that's be an cool interesting way to like get people engaged. As you were talking about yeah. that, my next thought was like, yeah, then how do you make people engage? And to some degree, mm-hmm. it's just like be good at music, right? It's just right, like play right. stuff that people yeah. want to hear. Um, but like, yeah, how do you separate yourself from a crowd where everyone is trying to be something special? Everyone's trying to be unique. Right. And I think getting people on stage is an interesting way to do that. Uh, as you look back. At, like shows you've played in the past like 
is there something stands out as like a most successful show or a show that is a, a personal highlight that yeah brought you the most validation on some personal level? Do you want to do you want to go first? Yeah, he does. I could. Yeah, sure. Um, I think playing the Webster Underground okay. was one of my personal highlights because um, that was the first besides like an arena show seeing like Twenty One Pilots. That was my first metal show I ever went to. Hell yeah! <laughs> and uh, I was thirteen. You know, I didn't even know what the underground looked like when I showed up. Um, so it was cool to to get to play there. Mm-hmm. Um, as my, I think that was my first time playing in Connecticut ever. <laughs> if I remember right, it was at the underground. So you're uh, from here, correct? Yeah, uh, you grew up here. So you played out of state before you ever played in this state. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't add up at all. My no, first show doesn't. with Slugs was in Detroit. Okay, because um, we we did that. That's where every first Connecticut band show. Two summer tours. Yeah, yeah. I remember my That's first sick. show. You know, <laughs> Bay City, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> we did. Uh, That's awesome. With Ryan, I've done I've done quarantine shows in uh, Providence and Massachusetts, but mm-hmm. actually, no, maybe one of them was in Connecticut, but. You know, drums was the instrument I started on. Yep. Um, so getting to play there was just a big deal for me, and I got a bunch of my like high school buddies to come down. That's cool. And, uh, That's and cool. watch. So how old were you at the time of your first time playing there? Oh, uh, that was like, uh, August. Re- oh, recently. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, ago. dude! One that stands out, personal success, something that you're most proud of in hindsight. Mm, I have, I have two. Okay. But for two different reasons. So the first yeah, we got time one for both of them. Okay. Brother. The first one was at the Jewel um, in New Hampshire, Manchester, mm-hmm. I think. Yep. Um, and it was a mixed bill. Um, I don't remember who was really on it because it was so long ago. But That's all good. basically, it was like two rap groups, and there was this other band, Temptress. That's mm-hmm. the only name I remember from it. But okay. so Quarantine used to have this like Ghost Main ass, you know, interlude beat because at the you know it was a time. Nothing ripped harder it than was Ghost a time. I'm still, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so we, I was on stage, and I was like, oh, we have a mixed bill full of rappers. I was like, who wants to come from freestyle? So one guy came up. You know, he was good. He did the thing. It was cool. He went on for, like, two minutes. But then the security guard came up, and he went for, like, five straight minutes, just nonstop. So then I had to grab the other mic, and I had to keep hyping him up and shit. And (laughs) No, it was super fun. We were the only, like, heavy band there, but, like, everybody there seemed to really be fucking with us so it was it was cool um did you see the photo of uh, alpha wolf this week i think it was a couple days ago they gave their guitarist one a security guy i saw that this morning i saw that this morning yeah. <laughs> same thing same energy there um uh, the second one that stands out the second one would be the palladium okay. when we played with attack attack traitors belmont um Savage Hands. Savage Hands. I was going to say Foreign Hands. Thank mm-hmm. you for saving me. Um, and that show was awesome. I mean, growing up listening to Attack Attack and, cool and Traders yeah. and shit. So it was like, oh, my God. Like, ooh, I get to play yeah. uh, with them. So that was that was a really cool time. Colton filmed a drum cam yeah, for cool. me. Uh, it came out super awesome. Yep. Uh, my snare sounded incredible. So <laughs> it made me feel good. Um, and it was just a great time. So I would say those two were, like, my Hell yeah. two favorites. I'm, I'm curious you guys both have experience of playing behind the kit and not behind the kit yeah and i think it's like guitar and vocals are different right but like mm-hmm. there's something more similar to them than between a drummer and them and in, right. in my opinion yeah. uh what's the difference there like how does it is it i've heard drummers say like it's it's a scary thing because they're leading the dance and everyone else just to follow the drummer but i also i don't know i feel like the physical thing of being behind a drum kit must give you some protection where it's like with a the vocalist there's the fear of like literally right in front of you, someone you've never seen in your whole life, and they may or may not know the words. They may or may not like what you're doing. They might just be looking at you like, who are you and why are you here? And you have to pretend it's not happening and still perform. I feel like with a drum kit, like you have your cymbals, you have all your toms. Like There is something cozy and familiar in that cabin. You're 100%. Talk to me. Yeah. What is different then between these two spots? Um, I feel, well, something that makes me feel comfortable as a drummer is if I like fuck up, I can just do a cool fill and then nobody notices. (laughs) And it's like, as long as I just, you know, stay on the beat, I'm good. But, um, I don't know. Also too, with the drums, what I like is, is you are just the commanding force and I enjoy that aspect of it. So then when we're going into a breakdown, like it's, it's all me and it just feels good to just, you know, slow it down half time and, and, uh, you know really get the crowd into it because i feel like i feel like the drums and the vocals are the two things that can really get the crowd into it more than anything else on the stage because mm-hmm. <laughs> i guitars just got so mad at yeah. you hey <laughs> that's fine that's fine with me i have my own bias but of course what yeah, I, yeah. i've tried playing the guitar yeah. i just cannot the uh, yeah i can kind of play a chord whatever but i just i don't understand it i like the rhythm section more cool um so that's my take on that yeah i i agree with that i think you got it completely right where you said like you're behind the symbols. You're behind the toms. Um, I actually like playing the. Ooh, 
I actually like playing the guitar more. Yeah, right. Yeah, for real. Um, I think I like guitar more live. Yeah. Um, because I like to move around, you know, do kicks and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, as best as I can. I'm not very flexible, so I actually watched the <laughs> video back. Up, so I can like barely outstretch my leg standing up straight. That's how non flexible I am. I watched a video back of me trying to do one of those like kick and stomps. Okay. It looks like I just raised my leg at the <laughs> knee. I in my head it looked really cool, but it didn't look cool at all. I um <laughs> I was doing vocals with quarantined one time and I like I swear to god I pulled my hamstring and it wasn't even on a stage. It was in this like tiny dive bar in Providence and there was like nobody there and I was like And it was sound check and you saw it. <laughs> no, it wasn't sound we were playing live and I was going crazy. I was going hard. I was doing like my stomps and shit and just something did not something feel didn't right. Play. And I was just on stage like stiff the it wasn't even a stage, it was a floor. So yeah. It was even more embarrassing. I know? noticed the last two shows that we played, we got pictures back. Um, both shows have a picture of you completely bent over at the waist, touching like, you're, with your palm flat oh, yeah. on the ground. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. You just, <laughs> I, I never know. You just gotta throw yourself around. I just see humble you busting it down. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, no, for real. I did the ice spice thing on stage when we <laughs> nice. played in West Haven. <laughs> Huge, so. Oh, I didn't notice that. I wish you I saw didn't notice. That. No. I wish someone got a got a video. Yeah, that on the drum throw this weekend. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stand up on the tw- the seat. Just you know. It's funny. I'm laughing as I describe like the drum thing. I realize what I was describing is my camera. Like as I'm shooting a show, somehow yeah. because I'm looking through my camera, I'm no longer in this room. And somehow, right. like standing in the photo pit, there is a weird sense of like I don't know, like, the Palladium photo pit. Like you are the barrier between the people and mm-hmm. everyone who wants to see the people. And I have direct access to both of them. That's a very like I don't know. It's always a very weird position to me of like right. I'm. I'm where everyone else in this room wants to be, right? If everyone else in the balcony could be standing where I am, they would. Right. And so why am I here? Like, there's always this weird, like, insecurity moment, and there's a moment of, like, well, so what am I going to do about this? Like, how am I going to make this work? And somehow, in looking at my camera, I'm totally gone for that. It's like a toy in my hand. I was laughing that, like, yeah, my little, whatever, four-inch by six-inch thing is the same as an enormous-ass drum kit. Um, But, of course, I have the luxury of having the crowd behind me. I don't have to look out at them. I don't have to acknowledge they're all there. you're not, like, performing. I just kind of feel that they're there, and I can, yeah, choose to ignore them. And I'm sure Uh it's an overwhelming presence, you know, when it's oversold and, you know, everybody's screaming. And there's I think when I'm at my best I am the only person in the room and that's like obviously when I'm at my best the sold out room hopefully and like right, there's right, right. people there but like I think when I'm at my best I uh when I'm taking promos of people I often have to joke like hey I'm sorry I right now people are like f- objects that are affecting light to me and that's mm-hmm. all I'm seeing and I think right. That's a horrific dehumanizing perspective on what I do, right? Like that's not. I think there's a lot of human. I don't want to. If, sound if like it helps I'm, you get your job done, I mean. But it, yeah. to some degree, when I'm at my best, like that's what's happening. I'm walking through a sold out venue. Like I'm not really acknowledging these people. They are just things. They are mm. just figures that are affecting and interacting with light. And my job is to make them look as cool as the things on stage that someone built, as the lights, as the people on stage. Like it's all. Right. It's all like an organism, and it's mm. like a. I don't know. I think as a kid, I always had the fantasy of like, I want to be a fly on the wall. I want to like know what people are doing when I'm not in the room. And somehow that's what a camera feels I'm like. It's like, I'm not yeah. in the room anymore. Like, yeah. I'm just observing a thing happening and it's nothing to do with me. It's just, right. I am operating a camera that's floating through the room. And it, mm-hmm. Yeah. Somehow it gives me a freedom to not worry about the crowd behind me or whatever's going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, shooting like a, a room with no barrier, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you're getting pushed around and stuff. Like, yeah. I did Invent Animate's headliner at the Underground mm-hmm. the other day. And, um, I was like, I tried to get some videos of the pit, yeah, but that's just impossible. Yeah, you know, no. I got at the uh, at the show Slugs played at the Underground. Mm-hmm. I shot some of the bands after we played, and I got the um, I had a a light that screws onto the top of the camera, mm-hmm. and it got kicked clean off. It broke at where it screws onto the camera. It got kicked clean off my mm-hmm. camera, so I don't have it anymore. Three hundred like, three hundred dollars down the risk. drain. Yeah, however much it is. I, mean, I don't know. It was from five use. below, but oh, okay. There there you go. Go. <laughs> oh, 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 right. That's part of why I kicked I'm, off. I'm glad I was yeah. so wrong. You know? <laughs> It's good being wrong sometimes, right? <laughs> we love that for us. Um, yeah, no, there is. I don't know. Even in the even when there's no barrier, there is still something to me of like uh, uh, I feel like I'm getting pushed by the crowd, but I'm not even interacting with them. I feel like I'm like a pool noodle, just being pushed around these people, and like yeah. my job is just to stay in tune with this thing in my hands. And there's something like uh, I remember shot uh, Bear Tooth a couple years ago in a sold out underground. Awesome. It was this similar thing as you uh, before the show. We were talking you saw Bad Omens at an underground show, uh, and it's a similar thing, right? It's like I saw them, and then a year later they were like, "How the hell were they ever in this room?" Yeah, right. But when I saw them, yeah, it was still sold out. They were clearly on their way to something. Uh, and even with that in mind, it was the same thing of like I would never be in the, like I 
it was so oversold that I would never be in that room like willingly or pushing towards the stage willingly. Yeah. But somehow when I had my camera, it was like, I don't know, there's a bunch of people in there pushing me and I don't like it, but look at this thing I'm doing instead. Right. Like, yeah. There's it's a fucking awesome. freedom in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, hell yeah. Is there like a, has there ever been a crowd that like scared you guys from stage? Like, is there a, ever been a moment where you look out? I, I think the, maybe the, the deeper layer of that is in a local show, like, it's not a sold out Webster where everyone's singing along. Like, sometimes you're looking yeah. out and you're seeing people with their backs to you, people holding a drink, people who should not be holding a drink anymore because they had way too many already. Like, yeah. you're seeing yeah. a mess of people out there. Like, yeah, what gets in your head on stage? What's, what's bothered you before? About, about a crowd? Sure, yeah. Um, I don't know if I can really think of anything that's bothered me, but there's been some people that, you know, in the hardcore scene, yeah. you know, people, there, there's crowd killing and stuff. There's there's a whole culture behind it. Just, yeah. But sometimes yeah. it's like, Jesus Christ, like you're about to kill somebody. Yeah. You dude. know, I was and, I saw a magnitude one time and I literally saw the bottom of this guy's shoe. Every detail <laughs> just go right across my face. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. gonna go grab a drink at the bar. Like I'm I'm all set <laughs> yeah. when I'm when I'm behind the kit. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about while we're playing a show from behind the kit. You know, it's. Pretty much impossible for me to get hit unless somebody comes flying over, which and that oh, would be kind of yeah. cool. So yeah. that's fine. Um, actually, I had I, I think the last show we played, um, quarantine played that show. It was quarantine and Slugs was the headliner, in uh, I think that was the West Haven show in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And um, at the end, when we had everybody come up onto the stage, um, someone was kicking my cymbal to the beat. <laughs> and, but I was like, I was fine. He ended up actually kicking it off the stand, so it hit the ground. And then he held it up. Uh, he put he put it on his finger like that, and I was hitting it at the end. Jesus. And it, it was cool. Like, yeah. I, I love that stuff. But sometimes... I You're going to be pissed off at your next show, and everyone's up there stopping on your drum yeah, kit. Right? Some kids, oh, like, yeah, yeah. on your snare drum, just doing hot feet or some <laughs> fast feet, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, I think Lincoln, Nebraska, I think there was the third show on, on our tour we did this summer. And that was, you know, the hottest, hot, hottest sweatiest hottest. show ever. Hottiest, yeah. ever. hottest, hottest show, show ever. Um, and it was packed. It was... It was uh, the upstairs of like a duplex apartment building. Nice. Um, <laughs> that's not where that's I what you were it was. Going like, with that, but okay. It was anim I think it was animation studios were the rooms next to it. Okay. Um, and that's, then and then just this like okay. super DIY punk venue. You know, like graffiti on the inside and stuff. Who would have thought there's nothing in Nebraska? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no. We sorry, hit sorry, some, whole state of Nebraska. <laughs> I apologize. We hit some some states that I've never seen another band go to ever. And they were great. Like the last show we played was our first sold out show ever mm -hmm. in Vermont. I don't think I've ever seen a major package hit Vermont like in my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and the scene there was, was awesome. That's sick. The, the small shows are, there is something to, to be said, I go into markets, people don't get shows a lot. And that's the, the underlying thing of the coming to Brazil meme, right? It's like, the, oh, hundred percent. Like, Cause no one goes to Brazil yeah. and then uh -huh. once a year. I have family. Uh, my mom is from Chile. And so we have mm -hmm. family in South America and it's the same thing. Yeah. Like I see photos of concerts there and it's always like, that's cr like, that would sell a 10th of that capacity here, but because things don't go down there often when they right. do, they're huge. They're, yeah. And that's kind of Vermont, right? It's not yeah. like, it's a similar thing of it. Makes I've sense always heard good back. things about the Vermont scene. Yeah. yeah. Always. Cause so everywhere I want to play there soon. Everywhere. There's, people that want to go see shows, yeah. you know? So if, if people aren't there a lot, whatever show comes around, they're going to go see it, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. You got to, got to do it well still. I think that the, I don't know, obviously it's hit or miss there. It's not a huge city where it's not a, I don't know. It's, it comes, yeah, hit or miss, I guess, is the fair summary mm. there. Like it's not a city uh -huh. demographic where you're going to get like a lot of passerbys coming through. You have to depend on a local scene and getting the right bands on that thing that's accepted within the scene that's cool in the scene right, right now. And there's dilemmas there. Um, my first little note here, guys, now that we've <laughs> successfully gotten this far into the show without talking about anything on my list, uh, <laughs> bring the Horizon cover band. Uh, so I saw a little little spiel online yeah. that you guys are starting a little side project. Yep. What the hell is a Bring the Horizon cover uh, band? What's going on here? You, you, you yeah, tell them. So it's, it's your idea. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that you brought this up. Um, I've been working on this for the better part of like two years. Hell yeah. So uh, bring me, you know, they've got all their like synths and shit going on. They, they super complex sound. Um, so I've been having to like transcribe that on my computer with like virtual instruments and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to make a show that pretty much sounds exactly like what they sound like. Um, assuming Ryan... Does a good job on the vocals. I, I think I'm. Not, I don't think I'm doing too bad of a. Yeah, no. Job. We actually we had our we first like half day. practice the other day, mm -hmm. and it sounded fucking great. Um, Is it just you two? Or so you have other guys helping out in the band? We have other people um, in the band, um, but I, nothing's like super set in stone yet. Um, just because we haven't been able to get everybody together, because trying to 
plan this like everybody else who's involved is also in a band so yeah, it's like exactly. in work so it's like trying to actually get this together mm -hmm. and then get people to learn how to play a bunch of bring me the horizon songs yeah you know is mm -hmm. i think going to be the are we like part. pray for plagues like we're what, doing bring the horizon we talking we're about? doing mainly what what we're doing some stuff from suicide season all the way up to that's the spirit okay yeah and then so we're not the glory going past uh, yeah i was thinking i'm i'm down to throw in you know a song i'd want to play braille absolutely oh, i like for, that song that, yeah yeah i mean i i want to change one. the set list every time yeah. i think like yeah. maybe not every single song on the set list every time but pretty drastically every time um we've gone through already we you know we haven't even had our first real practice yet and we've gone through probably 10 set list drafts yeah. over a year um, one time we had a like two hour long set list going like pray for plagues all the way up to like their newest single. Um, now and we were thinking of doing Sempaternal all the way through and only those songs. Yeah. We're, I think we have a final set list now and it's, it's like, yeah. that's the spirit. But Sempaternal. it'll, it'll continue to change yeah. over time. Yeah. But this is also, this also fills our little void because bring the horizon is like my favorite band. They're the band that got me, too. me yeah. into the heavier stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but it fills that void for us because they haven't announced a 10 year, you know, tour. No, tour, I haven't heard that, that yet. So you know, what the fuck's going on with that? You know, we'll just do it ourselves. Right. You know? Right. So, and we can do it whenever <laughs> we'll we want. Arenas, yeah. Dude. You yeah. guys, you guys don't play enough. So we're just going to do it for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't, I don't see Co tribute bands. For, coming up. Oh, oh, yeah. God. Yeah, fuck no, yeah. Absolutely, no, absolutely <laughs> not. No. No, thank um, you. Maybe, she hates the earth. Maybe we'll have our, uh, our concert video played in theaters. You hear about that? That she's doing so that? So sick to hate on Taylor Swift from a climate perspective. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. For real. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go make millions of dollars and then fly my jet like one state over. Um, like, fuck you, man. This morning I was watching the podcast clip of uh, the guys from Low talking yep. about the traffic for that Palladium show with yeah, Attack yeah, Attack. Yeah, yeah dude. Remember, that... I remember people, like before the show started, when I was standing there with my camera waiting for them to come out. <laughs> I remember people saying, like, oh, I was late because fucking Taylor Swift was, you know. I, I, saw, I saw the clip this morning. I think you guys said it was, like, 70,000 people coming from all of New England to one spot. I got stuck mm -hmm. in that Taylor Swift traffic. Yeah. My, my girlfriend at the time went to the show, so I had to sit in um, the middle of it, and it was horrible. Yeah. That's yeah. the worst, dude. It for an at the time. I mean, I found ways to have fun. I just kept the windows down. I was playing some, you know, Walk a Flock of Flame. And go. I kept going, Help! Nice. Help me! Nice. Help! So I, you know, I found a way to pass the time. <laughs> That's great, dude. I'm never flying with you ever. No, please I don't. Never be on please the plane don't. You'll, you'll get put on a no fly list immediately. Did <laughs> uh, you your first shows, uh, the first concerts you went to? I'm curious. Yeah, I'm, I enjoy going back to where this thing began because I think as I as I look back in my in my time, like for for me, it was an Avenged Sevenfold show. It was at the, the Xfinity Center, and it was their big. It was right when Nightmare came out, uh, oh, and it lucky was lucky son of a bitch. It, it was a 10 year anniversary for 9 11 as well. So it was December or <laughs> December <laughs> September 11th, 2011, uh, and so there was like a lot of memorial and tribute stuff going on, and right. it was like this enormous event for a first concert to right be. uh yeah. and it was crazy but i always think back and it's like i remember going there like standing in the parking lot like watching like the local openers and there's like a, a small festival thing in the parking lot kind of mm -hmm. thing happening and sitting there and being like whoa like i didn't know this was an option right and i'd be sitting here it's like oh they probably would have been my friends like if this if that show happened right now whoever that local band on stage would have been, right probably would be my friends and it's right. kind of wild to think of all this distance traveled as you guys look back yeah where is kind of square one where do you go to your first show here my first show was Warp Tour 2018. Uh, my yeah. mom like wouldn't let me go to shows because she was like, "Oh, you know, I don't want you to get hurt in the mosh." She wouldn't even let me play football when I was younger because I've always been like so scrawny. So uh, I had can't to relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to wait basically until I was like 18 to go to my first uh, show, and I went to Warp Tour, and I had a fucking grand old time it was I awesome bet. i got to see movements on the full sail stage mm -hmm. and knocked loose i think 
too. Yep. But yep. I saw a bunch of my favorite bands. Uh, I saw one of my favorite guilty pleasure bands, Memphis Mayfire. Absolutely. Uh, crowd surf for the first time. So. <laughs> Uh, it was Warped a good Tour time. Warped Tour a crazy first concert. I, dude, I loved it. I had a great time. It was raining. I got a fit for a King Tank top, got it signed. and That's just like a lot to take it. I remember it just being like so overall. We were, like, we were sitting in an arena seat. Like it wasn't like a, I wasn't at a pit. I didn't have to walk around. Mm. I didn't have like, warp Tour is like an overwhelming thing. Like that seems like a, was it scary to walk in? Were you excited? Were you like, what, were you with friends? What was your? Well, I was nervous. And then like, I smoked some weed before I went in. <laughs> nice. So I was just like extra anxious and you know, I was emo. So I was wearing black skinny jeans, uh, the rude jeans from uh, hot topic. And <laughs> man was, it, yeah, no, Still for bang. real. And like, you know, these mad, like, I uncomfy, your <laughs> dude, no, for real. Like I had these like maroon low top, like, low cut vans or whatever and i was oh, i was dying and then it started raining so <laughs> then all my tight clothes were sticking to me and it was just you know still had a great time though yeah that's the power warp tour baby yes <laughs> sir you, you know, know all it. that shit you know it and i want them to bring back those fucking monster sodas that they had the uh the tour waters? i like the red one no not the tour waters it was it, they had like these sodas they weren't energy drinks they were sodas and they were really fucking good i'll put in a word and in they my sponsors. Them. yeah please do <laughs> Bring the Monster Energy team go way back. <laughs> <laughs> first show, Colin. Uh, my first show was Iron Maiden at, I think it's the Xfinity Center. Damn, okay. Um, That's I crazy. saw them. Like, my dad took me. Um, How old were you? Like, were you, like, grown 12? or were you, like, five? Oh, okay. I think, yeah, okay. 12. Well, I, I, I think I saw, like... The backyard again when I was like five or something. You know the backyard again. Dude. Yeah, dude. I went to a <laughs> yeah, kids' dude. bob concert in two thousand seven. So <laughs> dude, I'm you know, them next yeah. week. So, <laughs> no, I'm dude, not. I'm not. So <laughs> fucking umbrella by Rihanna get covered by a bunch of kids. Oh yeah, Shit was awesome. Bangs, dude. Add it to the Bring the Horizon yeah. cover. Bring the Horizon covers Rihanna. Yeah, umbrella, dude. Let's go. Uh-huh. I think uh, that's fire. Yeah, I like to tap into that. Uh, the cover band thing is really smart, and it, I guess I'm skipping back a topic here, but it's an interesting thing, and I guess. Um, there is a popular cover band in our scene that has drawn a lot of controversy on both sides of the spectrum. But I think the cover band thing is a really interesting thing is like a way to gain exposure. Oh, yeah. With, and it's like a way to practice what you're doing. And I think by like emulating it, you also gain some practice. Like as you go through Absolutely. like recreate the Bring Me Horizon songs, mm-hmm. I'm sure there's a deeper level of understanding, like a deeper oh, yeah. connection oh, that you yeah. gain from this. Mm-hmm. And that has to then come off in your music. And regardless of what the cover band does anything, like I think it's easy because it's an accessible way to get booked in a bar, right? I think that's where cover bands are right, pretty successful much, yeah. in making money off of the bat where other bands take a long time to make money and have an income. Yeah. Um, but has it been like an experience where, yeah, you're getting more familiar with it? Has it like influenced your own creative processes? Like, yeah, how's the cover band thing been? I, I think it's definitely influenced mine, you know, deconstructing these songs that I've known for years, but yeah. just known as like a listener listening on Spotify. But, you know, finding like instrumentals and, and really listening, um, finding out all the different layers that go into a song, you know, there's, there's bring me the horizon tracks that have like 60 layers and just synths, I'm sure, you know, yeah. and, and I love that sound. So learning what, what they do to get that sound, which, <laughs> so now I know what I need to do to, to get that sound. And, uh, another thing about like playing the songs live, I'm, I'm imagining, I'm hoping that we get to play to a, to a decent sized crowd of people that all love bring the horizon, know every mm-hmm. word. So it's like, Getting to play on a stage to a lot of people that know all the words. Yes, they're not our words, but it's still cool. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, and, and that's the thing, too. I think, like, everybody likes Spring to the Horizon. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you know, at least like one they've song. They've got all by the them, different genres. You know? so. Right. I and mean, that's where Emo Night has found success, right? Oh, 100%. Like, let's just get all these people together and sing the songs. And there is something to be said for that. And I think uh, for being on stage, there's something to be said for, like, getting the exposure of, or getting the experience of being on stage where people know the words. I think, like, there has to be something of, like, learning to control a crowd and learning to, Absolutely. I don't know, yeah. manage a crowd and manage the energy. I don't really know what that entails. I don't know what that involves. It seems like something that's, like, an unspoken talent of, like, uh, to go back to your Memphis Mayfire vice, it's like Maddie Mullins is incredible at organizing a crowd and conducting right. a set and like chatting right. between and, and giving like the same speeches over and over again every single night. And <laughs> God bless his soul. <laughs> but yes, but there is something to be said of like a, a professionalism that comes with a band like right. that. We've done this so many times, and I bet that doing a Bring Me the Horizon cover band, if that gets you in an audience that is you know bigger than your normal audience, that is right. a good experience to have of learning to bring that back to a more normal audience or whatever yeah. you're kind of mm-hmm. typical, used to playing. Yeah, and I think that'll be super helpful, too, with learning how to do a stage routine because mm-hmm. I found that's something that uh, I think is really hard 
to be able to gain with, you know, how many people are in your band, four or five people to get everybody on the same page of like when we're doing this. So I feel like with that cover band and all these samples that we're going to be using, that means that we have to make the most that we can with our time between those samples and figure out yeah. what to do, what to say, what, you know, uh-huh. if we want to do some mosh calls or whatever, whatever yeah. it may it's, be. It's, it's going to be like to a click. So mm-hmm. you have a specific amount of time. If, if we're like between this song and this song is the talking part, you have 27 seconds to talk. So you better know what you want to say. Yeah. You know, it'll be like acting rehearsed. Like we're just, yeah. we're uh-huh. acting, you know, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. That's yeah. We're putting on a play basically just, a bunch of cool guys with yeah. cool instruments. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, no, that's exactly it. I think it's an interesting strategy to take. I think, yeah, it's wise to to diversify. And also, like, I don't know, if the goal is to play music, then play music. Like, I think right. there's, a, there's an ego thing of, like, no, it has to be my music. It has to be my thing. And I have to be the one. And it's oh. like... I've always wanted to do cover great. band stuff. Uh, yeah, I like, think it's so fun. Yeah, it seems like a cheat code to me of, like, you get a lot of the, the benefits without a lot of the dog shit that it took to, yeah, yeah, the to am- get to write Bring the Horizon songs. The mm-hmm. amount of older guys I know that I've worked with throughout the years that are like, yeah, I just do a cover band and I get, like, $400 a night every time I play. I'm like, damn, oh, $400 yeah, you, a night definitely. to play to play a bar and a bunch of covers for, like, an hour or two? Yeah. Like, That's on a Thursday funny. night? Mm-hmm. Sign, sign me up, man, you know? Yeah, I've I've grown up seeing my dad do that. You know, he's he's played in a bunch of different cover bands. He plays in two right now. Um, so and hearing like about sometimes they make pretty good money from from especially one set, wedding bands. You know. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Ryan always yeah, brings we it wanna, up. I want to like, start a wedding band. <laughs> he wants to do like that. Twelve grand it's, for uh, for a wedding. It's unbelievable <laughs> what you can get away with charging at weddings. And I I've I've worked a couple weddings. I've shot and charged. Mm. And like they've always been for homies. And I think I've always because it's been for homies like. I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm doing this because uh, I don't I don't love working weddings. The two times I've been involved with it were both times where they said like they were both like music couples and they were like right. we don't want like uh, JC Penny style photo here. Like we want something that is music and edgy and grungy and has our right, stuff right, and that's right. where I come in. And so like that feels like a job that I'm happy taking on, but like uh, if I were really interested in getting rich off of this, it's like weddings that the wedding was, business is a cheat really, code and it's unbelievable and like i i don't think it's worth it i don't yeah i also think it's very irresponsible to take on someone's most special day when i would be doing it for money like, right right like, i think it's uh i don't know i, I don't want to take on your music video if i don't love the thing and like right. to do that to right. a wedding is a whole nother <laughs> step of commitment and involvement you gotta sell there. a part of yourself uh, to do it but <laughs> if i did love that Tell you what, we would be in a house right now, not an apartment <laughs> recording this podcast. <laughs> so there's no news out there. I think for bands, it's the same thing probably. And uh, I don't know. You don't have to be exclusive, but I think it's worth trying. It's worth experimenting. Right. It's worth like, yeah, you have a musical ability, a musical talent. Let's right. put it in a bunch right. of different applications instead of just sticking in this one one little niche. Mm-hmm. Um I want to go back. You mentioned your dad's in a cover band. Yeah. Uh, I wanted, before the podcast, we were chatting about, yeah, currently 17, still in high school, yeah. which is crazy. Has uh, more touring experience than me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come um, on, man. I wanted to chat. Uh, I guess where, where does the music start is normally the question I like to chat about with people. Uh, and so I'm curious, yeah, where does this thing start? And then I know kind of getting up to speed now that you're in high school, your school has agreed to let you go part time. Yeah. So it seems like music has been in your family. It's been in your system. It's been a part that's been supported and nourished. Yeah, like, yeah, where does this thing start? And how does it get to a place where your family is like, yeah, go miss school because you're going to be in Lincoln, Nebraska, playing the upstairs of a duplex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's just being like surrounded by by supportive people. Like okay. that's the part that I have no control over. I'm mm-hmm. just lucky um, that that everyone's so supportive. Yeah. Uh, my dad's been playing guitar since he was 14, I think, mm-hmm. around that age. Um, so I've grown up with like 30 guitars in my house since okay. i remember you know we have like 40 in our house now including mine so he he builds guitars so he's just always been doing that um got it i got my first drum set when i was like four three or four and it's actually the one that ryan has now they got me they, they never got me a uh it's, it's not a toy kit ryan doesn't Yo, have a toy chill, kit chill chill out it's it's a tama jazz kit yeah okay? that's, that's what i was gonna say yeah, so it's, it was like fifty bucks from uh, Toys R Us. What's the? No, <laughs> oh, no it's what? a uh, it, it's a jazz kit, so everything's smaller. So that's what they got um, for me because it was little to yeah. learn on. But it's but again, it's the not, thing. It's not the like thing fucking kit. rips though for yeah. a tiny kit. Oh, it's, yeah, the I love kick it. drum sounds awesome. Oh, it's awesome. Ryan got some like what is it? Bulletproof snare. Head. So it's a Kevlar it's snare. Kevlar, head, which is that's just, what they oh, make bulletproof it, jackets out of. And and then I have a Aquarian two yeah, Aquarian. Uh-huh. kick and it's just oh, it's, it's so good. It, it, no, it sounds great. So but the reason I said that was because 
um, they they also got me like a, a short scale guitar mm-hmm. and a short scale bass too. Um, they got everything going on. So they were just like sitting in my basement along with like my Legos and my Xbox. So when I was little, I played Legos, played Xbox, didn't play music much. I'd play the mm-hmm. drums sometimes, but I'm kind of just banging on them. Yeah. Um, it's the only thing you're allowed to hit in your house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> but just over the years, like just having having access to them, if I wanted to touch them, I'd pick them up every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I started playing some like 21 Pilot songs on my bass. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, stop laughing at 21 <laughs> Pilots, dude. They're still good. I was listening to them yesterday. I like House of Gold, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but are you gonna talk to those streaming numbers? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I have nothing else to say. <laughs> but uh, just being able to pick up the instruments at any time. Yeah. Um, I think I think that's what it was like. I wasn't. I I've never done lessons. Well, I kind of want to do guitar lessons because mm-hmm. I don't know how to play any chords. Like I just, I I, I learned the guitar in drop D. Uh-huh. So just like everything with one finger doing <laughs> power chords and stuff because that's that's the music I wanted to play. That's so. all I can do on guitar, and I joke that it's like, if you know yeah. how to play guitar, then you know that I don't know how to play guitar. But if you don't know <laughs> anything about the instrument, I probably can trick you into thinking that uh, I know how to play it. Yeah, That's, yeah, kind yeah of I, can't, it. I can't play like, a, if you tell me like, play like a C major, mm-hmm. I'd be like, what the hell is that? But I can play like, some pretty technical stuff. Some on ridiculous, like, like North Lane shit. <laughs> yeah, on a whim, invent like, anime. Can't I play a chord. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think it's just, just learning like some, Learning some bass lines, some like pop bass lines, mm-hmm. but I would always play with a pick. Um, so then I picked up the guitar, I put it in drop D, and then it's not that much different than a bass. You know, you're using one finger, mm-hmm. and I started playing like I think my first song I learned was uh, "Downfall of Us All" by A Day to Remember. Absolutely, um, good, so that, that's a good first choice. And then, yeah, and then the rest is history. That was I one of the first songs I learned quickly. how to play on drums. Yeah, that's cool. Add it to the cover set. Yep. There you Let's go. go. It's already Let's in the repertoire. It. Let's do it. Uh-huh. Uh, was music in your household as well, or is it a little different? Vibe? For me, um, not really. I mean, it was in a way where my family really listened to like uh, Stained, Godsmack, you know, that corn, new metal y type of shit. But Three Days Grace was my favorite band growing up. Still love <laughs> them to this day. Yeah. Um, but I. No one in my house was a musician, yep. um, so I kind of just figured that out on my own. Uh, and the way I did that is I was uh, hanging out with this kid, and he had an electronic drum set. He played guitar, and uh, he had a double bass pedal. And for some reason, so when I started getting into heavier music, the, I liked the sound of the double bass a lot. That's why I like yeah, fucking metalcore so mm-hmm. much, because yeah. the drum parts are just so, like, commanding, and they just, like, I don't know, they tickle my brain good, but so... <laughs> tickle and, my brain good, I like that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I went up there, and I was like, you have a fucking drum set? I've always wanted to play drums, but you know, I'm not allowed to have a drum set, because uh, yeah. it would annoy everybody. <laughs> and so I started playing them and just kind of started going... And I developed a lot of terrible habits, starting out with a double bass pedal, so it's like you starting out with drop D, so you don't know how to play chords. I can barely get you a fucking paradiddle but i can go play uh, you know volumes on, yeah. the, on the kit or whatever and, and a lot of chelsea grin but nice. uh yeah so nice i shit. i, I kind of just got myself into music no one really inspired me hell yeah we taught ourselves uh when this thing started to become real so first band so we're yeah we're teaching ourselves we got a hundred thousand guitars in the house dad's yeah. making money doing music but like when does things start to become our thing and when do we go from a I don't know, an eight-year-old starting to like stumble around an instrument mm-hmm. to a middle schooler to an early high schooler who started to become competent, starting to mess around with other bands, starting to explore the world of music. Yeah, when does things like, when does this thing start to become like more viable, more real? Well, probably when I joined my first band, which was Quarantine, mm-hmm. um, they hit me up on an Instagram DM. This was uh, within the last year or so? Two years, yeah. Two, two years, years, yeah. Ago. Yeah. Um, I was 15 when I joined, I think. Mm-hmm. Um there's a, there's an app called Band Mix. It's kind of like Tinder for musicians. <laughs> okay. Um, but you have to pay to message people. So I just put like my Instagram in uh in my bio, so they don't have to pay. So I got um a DM from Quarantine. Is this the thing that people use? I I, I look. I wasn't involved in any of this. Uh, yeah. All I, I don't remember is them telling me about you. And I was like, he's 15. Like, is that? <laughs> are we allowed to have him in our band? Like. <laughs> I, I mean, if he's good enough, then yeah, sure. And uh, we look where we are now. He's a child <laughs> prodigy, so I'm just hanging on to him for success. He's going to take me far. He's going to take me to the top. We'll see. Hell yeah, dude, right on someone's back. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but they, they hit me up with a DM and, and told me to come to practice a week later. Oh, yeah. Um, and that was about it. But I actually didn't know they found me from that app until 
almost a year I was in the band and our other guitarist told me, he was like, oh yeah, when we found you on band mix, I was like, what? I didn't think anyone ever saw that profile. I thought they just found me from like a suggested Instagram reel or something. <laughs> I didn't know how they found me. It was but, your uh, Tinder profile. Yeah. I, yeah. My, my Tinder gave it away. Musician Tinder. Yeah. Damn. I've never heard of that before. I mean, I guess it, yeah. I guess there's an app for everything now. Right? Right? There's a website for everything. Now there's an app for everything. But um, hell yeah. What about you? When does it start to get like, more serious? It's re- uh, probably with quarantine. I had played in a f- few bands uh, doing drums like when I was in like high school and stuff. But we played like maybe collectively two shows all together. Yeah. Um, a lot of bands that didn't work out. It wasn't until I joined quarantine where... Uh, Shit, actually, like, I started getting, like, a solid footing kind of in the scene. Like, okay, now people want to book us for, like, little shows or whatever. So I would say with Quarantined in, like, 2019. So Quarantined then, I guess, yeah, it's a great place to dive into the story of it. Uh, I assume it's derivative of Quarantine, our pandemic, our our tumultuous adventures for everyone. It's... It's not because we were called Quarantined before the pandemic was even a thing. Uh, Two years ago? No, we've been a band since 2019. God, you joined Quarantine. I was, yeah, I was two years band. ago. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. I thought yeah, it was no, founded no, no. two years ago. No, I was no, like, no. Your time we, doesn't add up, yeah, mister. We, <laughs> we were a four piece for a while. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Uh, when we recorded Dead Views. Were you in the band when we no. were? No. Okay, yeah. We recorded Dead Views yeah. as. Uh, he was like six at the time. Yeah, yeah he was like six, too. He was yeah. born the same year the Nintendo <laughs> DS came out. That makes me like. No, nah, keep so, talking about the band. Anyways, yeah. I don't got time in my brain to quantify that. So, um, yeah, quarantine formed and we got our shit together in like 2019. Okay. uh, That was, uh, and we were. So it's your fault. You made this happen to us. You did this to the world. I guess I Uh did. So, you know, I guess I just solidified the the pandemic. You know, I made it happen. Yeah, it was was Ryan's fault. That's honestly Every, everything's kind of my fault. Uh-huh. <laughs> For what it's worth, if you want another water, feel free to grab behind okay, you. We got, we got plenty. Um, so quarantine then, it's you two. Uh, you've been a band for forever. So you, I assume, found it then in 2019? Yeah, they hit me up because uh, I think I, I posted a Facebook status or something like, hey, I'm just like looking for a band to do vocals in. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Dan, shout out Dan. Um he uh, he hit me up and was like, "Hey man, uh, do you want to like do vocals for my band?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, sure." And then we just went from there and uh, self produced our own EP and got him in the band and yeah. you know kind of went from there. So mm-hmm. that's a perfect little segue here. As I glanced over here, my next little note, my next little bullet point uh, was that joining bands must suck. Uh, mm-hmm. And so for me, I love my independence. I feel like I was listening to a podcast of two video directors talking. Uh, and they were really relishing in the fact that, like, every two weeks I get to join a new band. And for yeah. two weeks, I'm a part of this band. I'm best friends with these five guys. And two oh, weeks no. pass, and I'm in a new world. And, like, uh, there's something sad. Like, it's nice. That there are people I've worked with that I wish were still in my life. And sometimes it just doesn't work out because that happens. But the flip side is, like, for me, it's a really fun thing, one, to experience different bands' cultures and how, like, low is a really fun, like, you guys right. are really fun to hang out with. And that's different than how other bands laugh. And, like, your inside jokes are different than other bands. Right, it's right. fun to soak up a little bit from everyone. Mm-hmm. But it's also, for me, creatively really uh, freeing of, like, I can just be this and be that. And, like, I don't know, I can, I can kind of just be me more right. so. And I think when you join a band, it's like you're assimilating to a culture that already exists. There's already a group of guys who are hanging out. They've already got their jokes. And, like, it's not me coming in for two weeks short term as a different thing. Like, to come in, uh, yeah, to come in seems really, really tough and really stressful there. And I enjoy it my little doses. But over the course of a long time as you're joining Looking Head, it seems like it's going to be really stressful. Like, is it? Is it? Yeah, what's been your experience, I guess, is the better way to ask that question of joining bands um, and making it happen. My, my experience with joining bands... <laughs> Most of the time it's been it not like bad, but more so like disappointing. Yeah. Because a lot of the time it's like you get these talented group of guys together and, uh, you know, you all get together for one, one practice. You make something super cool. And then it's yeah. like, all right, let's get together then. And then, oh, uh, guitarist can't make the practice. OK, whatever. We'll regroup. And then it's just kind of this cycle. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really hard because mm-hmm. being in a band is like being in a relationship with someone because you know you have to dedicate five way poly literally literally (laughs) and you know you got to dedicate certain amounts of time of your life to to do this and to compromise and to deal with other people's opinions and and maybe you have some disagreements and everything so i think the hardest part of joining a band is finding a core group of people that you Mm -hmm. can really like jive with Mm -hmm. you know because i've been in plenty of bands where i like most of the guys but there's just one member that i'm just like 
It's always yeah. fun, yeah. Like, like he's not the worst, but like, you know, I'm not. I can't really, you know, vibe with him, whatever. And it's led me to leave bands. It's led me to kick people out. I've had to literally be like, hey, man, like, <laughs> it's not gonna work. I just like don't fuck with you like that. Like, I, I don't know. It's no, it's nothing yeah. mean. It's just. It's tough. I think it's incredible that, yeah. That it's, I don't want to be stuck in a van with you going on tour if I don't like you that much. You know I, what I mean? Let me put it this way. I don't have five people that I would want to sit down and make a video with, right? Like, there right. Are, I don't know five people that I think our tastes align so well that we could sit down. I think there are five people I like enough to sit down and do it with. Mm-hmm. But, like, the idea of finding five people I like enough and creatively oh, align so enough hard. is incredibly difficult. And, mm-hmm. of course, in the context of music, it's the same as music videos, right? Like, there are some people who I really identify with. But they want to go, they're aiming for Hollywood. And it's like, right. well, we're on a different path. That doesn't quite work right, out. Right. We're not going to work. And yeah. mm-hmm. bands, I guess it's a, maybe a different thing of like, if they are going to perform in a jazz band and you're saying like, I'm, I want to be the Webster Underground every night. It's like, well, that's tough. You're cool. We have good vibes. But like, right. this isn't yeah, it's not going to work thing. out. Yeah. To find dudes who have like the good vibes and the same vision, I guess is a really tough thing. Has that been like your challenge? I guess at, at 17, maybe you haven't had enough bands joined yet. Like what's your experience been? Yeah. So... Slugs and quarantine both. I've just kind of lucked out. Of yeah. Like, they're we went through all the cool all people. the hurt and the pain <laughs> to to make a safe space for you. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I'm I'm sorry, Colton. It's coming. Just <laughs> I know anything about this world and everyone else who's been in it for long enough. Like, oh no, you're hundred percent right. Your heart and build it right back up. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because we're uh, me, me and Ryan, we might start something of our own yeah. at some point. You know, Because yeah. we we both like softer stuff and mm-hmm. quarantine's heavy only yeah which is cool and which is why you can have as many projects as you want right mm-hmm. um so i think i think that's coming very soon yeah mm-hmm. if, if we're gonna start trying to find people that want to make like stuff that sounds like day seeker for example yeah you know we got to find people that are that are good at that have the same vision as us and are and are cool yeah you know? I, uh, with videos, I love that like I get to make a hardcore video this week and next week it could be a day seeker video. Not that mm-hmm. uh, day seeker is way above my clientele, but like for <laughs> reference for genre for sake of whatever. Um, I like to try and be careful with my words here because I've had mm. people come back and be like, "Hey, I heard you say this." It's like, no, 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 I, I didn't mean. I didn't I'm mean filming. it. It was just a joke. <laughs> that, was just, that wasn't yeah, me. It was an example. I didn't mean that I'm filming for day seeker. Someone made like, AI of me <laughs> saying that. <laughs> could could dude? I should AI deep fake all my episodes and just you save should. myself so we much time. We were right? actually not even here. Um, we this is all AI and we're. Literally, no one's ever been here. I've just hallucinated 42 no. episodes, 42 <laughs> hours of me talking to myself in my basement, <laughs> staring at nothing at this point. Um, that's sick as hell. I had a good thought that I was working on there. Um, I get to every two weeks, I get to like explore a new genre. I get to, yeah, be a metalhead. I get to then be a day seeker fan. Uh, and I get to explore all these different genres. I think in a band, there's a tough thing of like, yeah, quarantine's a heavy band. So if you have a day seeker influence, it, it could go somewhere else. Right. My question is like, when is, where is the line then of at what point do you just say like, Hey, what if we just brought Dayseeker into quarantine? And like, not that you're gonna call Rory and say like, "Yo, what's good, homie?" Right. But <laughs> yeah, like, uh-huh. uh, it, I guess my question is like, at what point do you make a side project, and at what point do you say like, uh, "Yeah, I am, I am Ryan, I am Colton. What my interests are are unique. What my cocktail of interests are mm-hmm. is unique to me." What if I make quarantine and day seeker meet? And I'm not saying they should. I think that there's a also a version where it's like, no, these are two separate things. Like we should keep them separate. But yeah, yeah. how do you make that call of like? Should we add a soft part to a quarantine song or should we start a whole new band to make these soft parts fit? I mean, personally, I wouldn't mind adding softer parts to a two quarantine songs, mm-hmm. but I feel like also at the same time, quarantine is just one of those bands that's it's just so fucking heavy and yeah. relentless the whole time that it's like you might as well kind of just start a side project if you want to do yeah. something like yeah. that just because it's just you know, with the quarantine stuff, it's just a straight, just brutal assault yeah, throughout we have, the whole. We have, we have new demos. It's like the sections are a breakdown into a breakdown, into yeah. a breakdown, into a pre-breakdown, yeah. into another breakdown. But I'm thinking of like so, Loathe, right? Like they've got oh, I love that Loathe, yeah. like sim- similar thing of like, uh, to, to use the, the metal phrase, like you can kill your friends <laughs> to Loathe. Like, yeah, 100%. Uh, but you can also cry and sing along. Like there is, they, they found a way to blend these two worlds. Like there's a part, uh, in their in their origin story where they could have said like now nah, let's split it and for some reason and rightfully so in hindsight they said nah let's put these two things together right and i'm wondering yeah like how do you how do you draw those two two apart i don't know i think i mean i think maybe for loathe specifically their their heavy parts are yeah. still so beautiful and their soft parts are mm-hmm. still like have some edge to them yeah um so i think them specifically it works so well 
Um, yeah. I think for quarantine, I couldn't I, imagine yeah, us having I, like a pop we, metal We course. have a song called Your Pain, and there's a section in it where I'm kind of like doing like a mm-hmm. softer, like more in the background. It's not a scream. It's just like a... Like a yelly type yeah, of yeah. sing in like, the background, and we try and it's screaming it's with sound, notes. It sounds cool, yeah. Screaming with notes, it sounds cool, but like, I just don't think it's a quarantine thing. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think quarantined is a band that would ever go down a a lighter path. I think if anything, they Dan would just find a way to tune his guitar even lower. So <laughs> the hell yeah, that's what I want to do. I'm a big I'm a big drop E guy. Keep going. I, I don't know anything. We're only in. We were in drop A. I got him to go down to drop G. I'm, I'm working on the next step. <laughs> One step at a time, literally. Yeah. Uh-huh. One half step at a time, I guess. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, yeah. To be clear, I'm not saying you guys should redefine quarantine to me. Yeah, it's an yeah, interesting uh-huh. thought experiment of like, yeah, what point do you, and I guess for me in a music video sense, it's like, yeah, at what point am I just overloading this video and what point does it require more ideas, right? So as I'm working on, uh, as I'm working on a video, it's like, I don't know, we can just keep adding stuff to this, but if I just keep adding new ideas, eventually we kind of lose the the essence of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's mm-hmm. a similar thing here with quarantine of like, yeah, what is quarantine? That at what point can you add and subtract and still still make the thing? And it's an interesting challenge to me because I, yeah, like I said, I get to populate a bunch of different ideas. I've never had to stick to one thing as like, no, this is who I am. It's right. Like, no, every two weeks I can be someone new. And it's kind right, of a right. fun little uh-huh. fun little masquerade party for me. Yeah. Um, hell yeah. Um uh, what was my last? Oh, uh, I'm having a brain fart here. Just all good, between man. where I want to go. I do it all day. Um, <laughs> it's all I do. <laughs> all day. Uh, uh, we were chatting about video stuff before, and of course, we've all worked on video stuff together. Uh, my question here, my thought here was like, what's ma- what makes a good video experience for you guys? So obviously, there's the the process of there's two t- parts here, right? There's the process of making the video and the mm-hmm. process of delivering it. And it's like I, it's important that we have a good time on set filming this thing. But if all we do is have fun on set and this thing comes out like shit, we waste our time. Right. That said, if the day of filming is an absolute nightmare, I don't think it matters what I send you. You're still going to have a bitter taste in your mouth unless that thing becomes to the hellfire. Mm -hmm. But like short Mm -hmm. of that, it's like there has to be balance here of like how, how hard we push on set and how much this thing is worth it in the end. And I guess for you guys as a band, like what makes a music video shoot good? Is it the outcome? Is it having fun on the day? How do you balance those two things? I, I, I think it's uh, all about the fun you have mm-hmm. uh, throughout the video because, uh, you know, with the, the camera and the delivery and stuff, you can always go back and change it. But if you're yeah. having a terrible time yeah. making a video, like, you're probably just going to think back to it and just be like, that was a horrible fucking day. Yep. And I hate this fucking video because I had such a horrible time, you yeah. know? So I feel like it would, even if it still comes out good, yep. there will still be that kind of malice with it and uh make it less enjoyable i guess there is i don't say that freedom comes through on camera um yeah anything or so i i've only done one video we mm-hmm. did it on tour um the 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 where we shot it it was just one of those like i, I don't know what they call the them. sick wall the, the big the white, white walls yeah the, uh-huh. the sick i think it's like a cyclorama is like the real name but sick cyc is the okay term you always say. yeah i'll try to remember that um that was the venue. That's where we played. Mm-hmm. So we just showed up an hour early. So I, I think cool. it was LCY Media. Okay. Um, he's done videos for Orthodox, Kublai Khan, I think. I don't want to give out examples because I could be wrong, <laughs> but I believe he's done those two. Hell yeah. Um, and if they haven't, then I'm sure whatever they did instead was also cool. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's all, it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's actually, it's one take and it's in black and white. <laughs> and when, when Elliot told me about that, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to look good. Then when we got there, I was like, oh, shit, this is cool. Mm-hmm. And then we watched uh, one of his videos on the drive there. And we're like, "Like this is not what I was expecting. And then, and then when we watched it back, it's not out yet, but when we watched back what he had on the mm-hmm. camera, it's like, this is this is really amazing what he could do with, with a gimbal, black and white, one take. That's mm-hmm. it. So I guess I don't have the experience of like spending all day on a set doing a bunch of takes. But we're actually going to do that. Me and Ryan in quarantine are going to do that next week. Yep. Um, Hell yeah. We're, we're shoot on our on my way here. I picked up the camera rental. We got a Canon 90D and some some nice uh, Canon glass. Huge. And uh, we have that for seven days, I think. Yep. Hell yeah. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a video this week. That's sick. So not only am I like, besides that one take, I'm I'm performing in my first music video. But I'm also doing my first music video mm-hmm. too because I'm gonna be shooting. <laughs> everything that I'm not in, which I've, is most of it. I've done it. Yep. So uh 
it's it's a daunting task. If I can I'm help nervous. out with that, if I can support it all, please, yeah, feel free to reach out Thank off you, there. Yeah. I guess, yeah, there's plenty plenty of lights we can chat through and borrow. Okay, and gear cool. We can chat through and Sounds yeah, good. I've done the same Thank thing. You, I've, sir. I have yeah. filmed videos of myself playing in this. I've filmed full bands in here that I was uh -huh. in, and yeah, I would pass pass off for the one scene that I had to be in basically, and then film the rest of it myself. So I've done it. Um, the reason I bring it up is there's a Black Tongue video that I always think about. Do you guys know Black Tongue? They're yes. some like European somewhere from Europe, maybe. Yeah, I, I think know. they're from the UK. Do they have people from about. Infant Annihilator? Yeah, the band? Aaron Kitcher is the drummer. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, they have a video, uh, I'm forgetting, In the Wake of the Wolf, maybe is what it's called. Okay. Uh, the video is filmed, uh, when you see it, it feels very like staggery and shaky. Mm -hmm. Because what happened is the video was filmed in like, I think it's one eighth speed. So for the three minute song, four oh, minute song, okay. it was like a 32 minute performance. Yeah. And so as they're playing, you're playing the drums like this. And then when you speed it back up to normal time, you get this really crazy, like exorcist, like shaky movement. Yeah. yeah. But it's always struck me as like, it's one of my favorite music videos of all time. Like it's of all, I love them. I've watched so many music videos of all the ones I've seen. That's one of the few I've stood out. It's like, I've never seen anyone do anything like that. It's so mm -hmm. unique. It's so cool. It's so creepy. Like I feel like, a lot of times when things are unique, they are bad in a sense of like, if someone's only done it once, it's like, there's a reason no one tried it again. Right, right. And this has always stuck out to me. It's like, no <laughs> one's tried it again because I can't imagine asking someone to do that. Like in right. the context of a low video, it's like... For 32 minutes straight, just... For to, how many takes? For right. how many times? And uh, you assume they yeah. have multiple cameras to uh, you know expedite the process so mm -hmm. you don't have to do that 10 times. But it's like, that's an insane day, an that's, insane that's process. Ask, and yeah. to ask you guys to learn the song at that, like... I've played around with 50% and that feels like close enough that as long as you do it in the car on the way there, mm -hmm. we'll, like we'll get it and 50% is slow. It's close enough to real speed that like you can make it work. But like right. to me about like one eighth, one tenth speed, like that's a lot of time of yeah. like relearning the song on a whole new level of yeah, turning definitely. four minutes into 32 minutes. And it's like, uh, if that's my favorite video of all time, and I don't know if it's number one, but let's say for this example that it is, then I should be trying to replicate that. Right. But I don't think I could ask someone to do that. I think mm -hmm. I would like feel bad. Like it would like, right. so I'm always wondering how do you bounce the two things of like, what's worth it on the day of set? And at what point is it like, fuck it would look cool, but we don't got time to be here for 32 right. minutes playing one song. Yeah. Right. Have you ever experimented with uh, playing the songs faster and slowing it down? Mm -hmm. I want I want to try that this week. Yeah, we can Maybe do that. Maybe play them at like one point five speed because mm -hmm. I think it's cool when it look it has a slow motion look, but it's the right time. You know what I mean? The the challenge we always run into there is that as the in the context of the drums, let's say as you play the drum fill at one point five speed, it gets messy, and then when we mm -hmm. slow it back down, okay. that yeah. messiness is way more obvious than it would have right. been in real. So you end up playing it correctly at one point or you end up leaving set going, we nailed it at 1.5 speed. And then in camera, you slow it back down and you do the math and the math is always way more annoying than it should be because mm -hmm. it's it's not 24 frames, it's 23.976 frames yep. and that doesn't uh -huh. divide into anything well. And then you end up realizing like, yeah, the time is off. And so I've fixed it in the past with like time ramping and you can kind of, yeah, you can manually adjust it to make it fit a little bit better. And mm -hmm. uh, what I've done is like put a, a keyframe point at like each drum interval, and then you can just yeah change the interval between hits mm -hmm. and okay, yeah. make it work that way. Um, so it's possible, but yeah, it's it it's one of those things that always gets so complicated. And like that's me going that double is hard. How the fuck do you get to one eighth? Like it doesn't like it's so crazy uh, to me, but it looks lots so of patience. Cool. It's unbelievable. It's the coolest looking shit ever. I'll show you guys when we when we wrap up here. All right. um, but it like yeah, I've always gone back and forth of like yeah, where do you how do I justify these two things? Like mm -hmm. I, I want to get the best out of you, but if it comes at the cost of having to play the song for thirty two minutes, then like yeah, I think it just depends on the band's ambition, yeah. you know, because if they're if they're really wanting that effect on the video, yeah. they'll fucking do it. They will. Sit I would there. love to know the story. Yeah, I don't quite know how it came to be or who said we should do this. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the story there, but um. I should find out. I should explore it and try and yeah. find that out. Um, hell yeah, dude. Fire. Uh, last little piece I'd like to chat on here before we wrap up. We're at 58 minutes, so we've flown through this. Oh, wow. Mission accomplished. Um, as we wrap up here, I'm always curious about life outside of music. So we chatted about all the stuff we do at drum sets. We yell into a microphone. We play guitar. We play shows. We tour. Uh, who are Ryan and Colin outside of music? What is something you guys that makes you guys happy that you enjoy doing that is yeah not something we talked about in the last 59 minutes, 58 minutes, and 57 seconds, <laughs> to be precise? Not much because yeah. I have so many projects that, that is I do. How I, am. Yep. Um, I guess video and photo, which yep. kind of ties into it. It does. But, yeah. Uh, doing that, I, I I started a job kind of at the Webster, mm -hmm. um, doing the media there. So that's 
that's been taking up some of my time, which I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, because I get to shoot some of my favorite bands. That's it. I get to go see We Came as Romans for free. I'm mm-hmm. actually getting paid to yeah. sh- go see We Came as Romans. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so that's about it. Yeah, dude. And then and then like hanging out with my friends. That's cool. How'd you Every once in a while. Uh, they had a job fair. I just went there. I showed them the video that I made for Low at the Palladium, That's and cool. they said that that was the yeah. Exact you're vibe you're welcome for, for the job. Kid. Yeah. Uh-huh. Vision and every, but everything ties together. That's sick. Know? It is that. It is the legwork of showing up the job fair. I think that's the the key detail there. Of like, as I look past on where I've done well and where I wish I'd done better, it's like things that I've done well were legwork. Mm-hmm. Like that's every time I didn't choose the legwork option, it didn't go well. And every time right. I chose legwork, something worked out. It wasn't always perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't exact. But yeah. that's the thing is going to the job fair. I think that's the the part that other people get lost on is like they hear someone say that I work for the web server. It's like, that's cool. You have to go to the job fair. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable and take a risk and take a chance on this thing. And yeah, mm-hmm. it does pay off. And I'm sure there's other chances that haven't paid off. Uh, but yeah, the ones that do are the ones that right. people remember. Right. <laughs> um, Hell yeah. Uh, Ryan, anything else I um, anything else I like? For me, I mean, I mainly just do uh, the band stuff. But other than that, I very actively, as much as I can, play basketball. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been into sports, um, which was a, a little – it's kind of weird for me growing up because all my friends are super into sports. So, like, everybody would be listening to, like, J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, you know, I like Three Days of Grace, Marine the Horizon. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, you're fucking emo? You're <laughs> fucking weird, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, they were right. To be they fair. were no, they were one thousand percent. They were they were fucking weird too. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, not much other than I just kind of play basketball, hang out with my friends, uh, fucking work nonstop. Yeah, you know that's just how oh. it is, man. Hang out with my cat. Shout out my cat Lucy. Shout out, dude. She's watching. Dude. Fat son of a bitch. Yeah, hell Holy yeah, dude. Shit. Lucy's queen. <laughs> Tank. I don't know if I know Lucy. I don't know Lucy, but I wish I did. Oh, I'll, I'll show you after we. After we approximately the size of this table, dude. She's right? ginormous. Did you meet my cat while you're up there? I did meet your cat. How do they compare in size? Um, similar in size, but you just have a naturally like bigger cat. My cat's just a fat ass. Like she's yeah. Yeah. My boy's a king. Is what yeah, you're he's a king. No, no, he's a he's a healthy, strong king. My he's cat, sturdy. Nah, she's a, she's, a, she's a fatty. She's my a family always says that I'm overfeeding him. I'm like, nah, he's just a hard. No, boy. he's just a mm. yeah. He's, he's a fucking hog. Yeah, dude. you heard that, fam. Uh, <laughs> I know they're watching. Hell yeah, kings. That is our hour. Uh, before we get out of here, uh, where can people find you on social media? What can they look out for? Where do they find your bands? Where do they tell you that you're awesome, cute, that your bands are sick? Uh, yes, Colton, we'll start with you. Where, uh, where can people find you on social media? Quarantines, quarantine underscore CT on mm-hmm. Instagram, slugs.860203 on Instagram. Um, my, my, mine is C Stunner. Hell, See, stunner. Stunner. I gave, I gave he came up name. with that. That gave, was my rap name. Um, my social media is my personal Instagram, and everywhere else you can find me is Ryan underscore Watley. W H A T L E Y. Yeah, uh, that's important, motherfucker. <laughs> um, and then I play drums in low at low dot four thirteen, and then uh, at quarantine underscore ct. Hell yeah! All yeah. of you in the description. Um, yeah, go check that out. Go check out both of the bands. Go check out the videos I've done for them because got to plug myself. Yes, in sir. This bad Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. Uh, enjoy. I'll see you guys Sunday. I guess when this comes out, I'll maybe also see you guys the next Sunday. I don't know what I'm doing that Sunday. But there's also a show like a couple days after this comes out. Yeah, come so watch see, us. Go see yeah. the bands. Uh, they're playing somewhere in Massachusetts. Was that right? Uh, yeah, Gardner. Gardner on the 22nd. Gardner on the 22nd. It will be on our social medias. I yeah. promise. Be there, kings. Hell yeah. Appreciate you coming through. Thank you for having so us. Much. Episode 42, something for everyone. Yes, yes sir. sir.